Okay, concept set mappings. I'm gonna talk about the mappings, but to start with, I'll talk about what the concept sets are themselves. Um, back to Nico's starting slide here, we have two sets or bags as he called them of different concepts. I'll get into more detail about the difference between an answer set and a value set in a moment. Uh, I wanna reiterate what Nico pointed out with the, the predicate between the sets as holes and the predicates between the concepts as individuals. Um, so there's two kinds of concept sets. I'll talk about the content, but then also the, the use cases, because as I think more about the, the value sets, it's the use case I think that differentiates them more. So first, an answer set, as the name implies, is a set of answers to a question. You might have a question like, what is the patient's sex identified at birth? And you may have a list of answers like male, female, and others, as well as other values as well. Um, an answer set is typically part of a, or can be part of a, a schema definition as a constraint on the values you would put for a variable that would identify the patient's sex. You, you would restrict the, the values, in this case, the concepts to a particular set. When you're mapping from one to the other, you, you need to navigate what could be different sets. And we'll look at that in more detail. A value set, on the other hand, is a set of related concepts for retrieving data, not so much constraining the data. So uh, you may want to retrieve patients that have heart failure out of a, an EMR or an OMOP instance. And here's a set, um, a partial set of terms that I found to do that. We have heart failure, cardiomyopathy, and interestingly, pleural effusion due to congestive heart failure. Um, the first two are reasonably closely related. Cardiomyopathy is a, a, a disease of the heart muscle and heart failure are issues that happen when the heart muscle isn't able to pump as well. Pleural effusion gets really interesting because it's fluid around the lungs. And this concept, plays here because of the, the second part of it, the due to congestive heart failure. So I, I can only assume that the reason this particular value set included that concept <clears throat> is that uh, in evaluating this value set against uh, a data set that's being queried, they found patients that weren't tagged with the first two concepts and found that they were able to retrieve them by using the plural effusion one. <clears throat> This gets kind of confusing. I suspect it's out of scope, so we'll focus on answer sets. There are a number of different sources for answer set and value sets. <clears throat> Loink includes answer lists called normative answer lists. They have their own ID separate from the concepts. It's very neat and tidy. Um, the NIH maintains the value set authority center which is typically value sets rather than answer lists. The CDC has at least one well-known um, answer set for race and ethnicity, the CDC rec. We'll look at an older version of that particular answer set, which is nice and short and simple. It's gone through um, some revision and is much more complex in, in more modern versions. Um, the National COVID Cohort Collaborative, which I do some work involved in ETL and OMOB, uh, collects data from a number of different sources and makes it available to researchers. And in the process of that research, they develop value sets very much like uh, the heart failure set I was discussing earlier. And when their research is published, the value sets are published as well on Zenodo. Um, HL7 and its fire efforts also includes a lot of terminology work as well as the, the value sets. It's interesting to note that HL7 and the Value Set Authority Center have adopted um, OIDs to identify the value sets. And I believe N3C follows that as well. So here's the, the simple CDC rec answer set for races as a, a starting example. We're gonna look at a mapping to a, another answer set for race codes. This one is reasonably simple and um, uh, conference participants from North America will recognize these, these values, American Indian, Asian, Black or African American, Native Hawaiian, white, and other. Um, 
the other concept there is, is sort of interesting and will come up later. The other set comes from HL7 and is much longer. I only list part of it here. You might notice that many of the same concepts reappear or, or appear in this, in this set as well. Um, I wanna mention the, the concepts in both sets in this case come from Loink. Um, if you look in more detail, you can see that there's sort of some implied subsumption there, and that's where the, 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 the length of this set comes from. It actually lists all the Native American Indian tribes and ends up being a very, very long list. The basic proposal, we haven't gone into detail with the proposal, but the idea is to profile the, the mapping set to a concept mapping set so that we can add um, add metadata and perhaps handle some of it differently. Uh, we'll reuse the, the mapping as the concept mapping. That part doesn't change too much. The issues in the mapping set that come up involve what predicate you choose to, uh, to relate the sets as a whole together and what it can tell you. Um, another question is whether we want to reuse subject source or which would point to a vocabulary or an ontology. Um, or profile that to a subject set ID to make it more clear that we're talking about, um, I guess, a, a domain or a range of the mapping as a, as a set rather than a full vocabulary or ontology and, and provide the, the ID for it. Um, and then there's some questions about concept sets that may not have a canonical home and whether assessment is the place to, to keep those. Here's an example with a, a little more detail about the issues I raised. Um, much of this should be very familiar from the, the existing mapping set, but there's a predicate relating the, the source and target sets. I chose broad match here because in many cases, mapping from the longer set to the shorter set, I had to do a, oh, now I may, I may be mixing up the direction of the, the, the SCOS um, predicates, but the, the mapping goes to fewer terms. Also, there's the question about how to identify the set and its version. And then um, perhaps out of scope is what to do when you don't have a home for the, for the sets themselves. Uh, one way of dealing with it is to leave them implicit in the mappings and provide some metadata here. Uh, the mapping should seem reasonably familiar. Obviously, I left off a bunch of columns and just stuck mostly with subject, predicate, and object. And then you can start to consider some of the issues you run into when you're mapping between schema and wanting to live up to the constraints imposed by them. And here's a, an interesting issue or situation you might run into if you have one schema that uses the list of races on the left that includes the, the value other, and you're mapping to a schema that for whatever reason shows a value set that doesn't include other, and I've seen this, what do you do with those values? Um, uh, you probably don't map them because you can't. And I think the real issue here is making it clear uh, the shortcomings that you're forced into in this situation. And so you, know, you might ask, is there a predicate we can use that would include this sort of information or do we have um, other metadata that, that we would include elsewhere? So, um, I reiterate here the questions and I ask folks for theirs. Thanks.